Chicharron pork belly burnt ends are not for the faint of heart. I'm going to take the viral crunchy pork belly bacon burnt ends and show you just how easy they are to make at home. By the time we're done, you'll have two things. One, soft, pillowy pork belly bites, and two, the crunchy skin that we all love so much. So stick around and see just how easy it is. Hey, everybody, welcome back to another week of the Fogo Life. That's right, crunchy chicharron pork belly burnt ends. Oh, my goodness. So it's gone viral. It's everywhere. I've seen my buddy, I think my buddy Chef Cuso, he actually invented this, okay? So what it is, it's pork belly burnt ends, but with that crunchy chicharron on top, all on one piece of meat. It's incredible. It's fun, and it is going to be outstanding. So we're going to show you how to do it. I'm going to show you a little foil boat method on how to make those burnt ends really squishy and uh, make that chicharron really crunchy because that's what we want. So let's go ahead and get started. We are starting with this beautiful piece of pork belly that I got from my local butcher. For this application, you want a piece with the skin still on it. The skin is the part that's going to turn into that beautiful crunchy chicharron. First step in attaining that crunch is by piercing the skin. You want to put as many holes into the skin as possible. This will allow the fat to render better. You could use a jacquard like this one here, or simply grab a couple of knives and start stabbing like your Freddy Krueger. You don't want to go all the way through. You simply want to pierce the top layer just deep enough to touch the meat. Now, doesn't that look like fun? And uh, now step two. What we're going to do is we're going to salt it. Okay, we're going to salt it because it's going to dry out the skin. All those holes we just poked in it, it's going to seep in there. It's going to suck all the moisture out. So you want a good coating of salt. You can use table salt. I have coast coarse soap. We're going to put a thick, thick coating on here, though, and then it's going to sit overnight. This part of the process is super important. Without salting and resting it, the chances of getting that crunchy crackling go down dramatically. I like to use coarse kosher salt for this and put on a thick coat. Every inch of that skin should be covered. Now, that's perfect. We are full of salt. So I have this little uh, pan here with a little rack in it. I'm just going to set this on here. OK, all oh, that salt. Woo. All right, just like that. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this sit in the refrigerator overnight. You want it 24 hours. You want to pull that moisture out because it's gonna make a big difference in when you're getting that crunchy, crunchy skin, baby. So you know the next part. To the refrigerator! All right, folks, we're out here in my beautiful backyard grilling area. We're gonna use our Weber kettle today. That's right. We're gonna use our briquettes and I'm gonna teach you something special, okay? You always see me use a blazer ball. Well, for you guys, I'm breaking out a brand new one. A brand new one, okay? I've had about two years of use out of my other ones and they just don't look quite as nice anymore. So, really simple. Take this, put a couple of our all natural fire starters in there, just close it up and we're good to go. If you're not yet familiar, let me tell you a bit about our new briquettes. They're unlike any other briquettes on the market because they're 100% natural. No fillers, no waxes. They're made from coconut shells, and they use all-natural binders to hold them together. They're available on our website or exclusively at all Ace Hardware locations. Just like our lump charcoal, they come in an easy open bag. Just pull the string, and you're in business. We're going to smoke this using the snake method in our Weber kettle. If you're not familiar with the snake method, we made a whole video about it. Just click the batter on your screen, and it'll show you everything you need to know about how to set up the snake so you'll have a long, even burning fire. One click of the torch and we're ready for lighting. Hit those Fogo starters inside the blazer ball and let it go. The design of the blazer ball allows the starters to burn even when covered with charcoal. Pretty cool, right? You have a blazer ball yet? Let me know down below in the comments. I'll send one to one lucky person who doesn't have one yet. Trust me, it's the best way I've found to light my Fogo, and I want you to experience it too. To get some smoke on the belly, I'll add some bourbon barrel smoking chunks to the beginning section. This will allow the smoke to hit the meat for the first couple of hours. This is the time when the meat will take in the most smoke possible. We need that kiss of smoke. Only one thing left to do is to put our grate in. So it's got these little flaps on the side. I'm going to leave it so that it's over the snake so that I can access the charcoal. I'm just going to set it in here. We want to bring it to 275 degrees. So we close it up, open our vents, and let it rip. All right, boys and girls, look at this. This has been sitting uncovered, salted in the refrigerator for 24 hours. If I haven't covered already, what that's going to do, it's going to make the skin when it cooks up, crisp up so much better. It dries it out. The salt sucks the moisture up out of the skin and actually is going to help make it a lot drier, which is going to help make it a lot crispier. That's our gold cheat shot homes, baby. So we're going to go ahead and scrape all of this salt off at the top and get it ready for cooking. You definitely want to remove all of the salt here. If not, that tasty belly is going to turn into more of a salt block and nobody wants that. The best way I've found to do this is to gently scrape it away with a knife. Don't cut into the skin, just enough pressure to remove the salt. Don't forget to get down into all those nooks and crannies to remove all of that salt. And I just like to make sure that I have everything off, so I usually just give it a quick rub down with a paper towel. Just make sure we get as much off as we can. Last thing we want is salty, salty pork belly. Now comes the fun part. Flip that belly over so the meat side is up. 
Grab your fillet knife and slice that meat into about two inch by two inch cubes. The important thing here is to be careful not to cut through the skin on the bottom. We want that fully intact in one solid sheet. Once it's sliced, this is what it should look like. Pretty cool looking, right? Now we apply our favorite barbecue rub. I'm using Notorious PIG Pork Rub for PS Seasonings. It's sweet with just a touch of heat and it's packed with flavor and it loves it when you call it Big Papa. When applying the rub, make sure to get a full coating all over the entire thing except for the skin side. We want it all the way down inside our slices so that all sides of the cubes are covered. Hey, as a reminder, there's always a link down below in the description for all of the products that you see me using here. There's also a link for the recipe and full blog. This next part is another little trick to help with the crispy skin. It's vinegar. I've seen folks use white vinegar, red vinegar, but I prefer apple cider vinegar. It just seems more, I don't know, more barbecue. All you need to do is take your basting brush and paint on a thin layer of the vinegar. You don't have to go all Picasso here, just make sure you hit all the skin. And there you have it, a fully prepped belly that's ready for smoking. Let's head to the grill now, shall we? All right, well, here we are back outside again. So we've got our pork belly, we've got our smoker going at 275. We are in good shape. All we're gonna do is take this whole belly and simply lay it on the grate across from the fire, okay? We want this indirect, so we're gonna cook it across from the fire. So my fire is burning here, I put the pork belly over here. And when I close it up, okay, the vents also are the polar opposite side of the fire. So when the fire comes up, the smoke comes up, goes through, rolls over the meat, and then out the vents. The perfect setup. Once that beautiful belly's on there, just let the smoke roll and leave it alone. As you can see, it's already gotten dark out and we haven't even touched it once. Try to resist the urge to peek in on it as it's smoking. Remember the old saying, if you're looking, you ain't cooking. Well, folks, if you just wait around smoking stuff for long enough, somebody else is gonna show up. Everybody, this is my daughter, Caitlin. Say hello, Caitlin. Hello, Caitlin. Every single time. <laughs> You know what we got going in here? No. You don't? Nope. It's pretty cool. So, Chef Cuso did a pork belly burnt end chicharrones. So guess what? Yeah, baby, yeah. So we're actually at a time now, I'm gonna pull this off of here, okay? And we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm gonna try what's known as a foil boat on this, on the bottom part. Look how gorgeous that is. Is that beautiful or what? Oh my gosh, the caramelization and the yeah. color. Gorgeous. Incredible. Now, let's head over to the prep table and do some work. This next step is where we really build the flavor on the burnt end part of the meat. I'm coating the entire meat side with Tillman's Chipotle apple barbecue sauce. There's just something about apple and pork that go together well. Give it a solid coat of sauce, then use a basting brush to paint that sauce on every inch and in every crevice of the meat. Make sure to hit all the slices where we cut in between the meat and make sure the cubes are completely covered. That's gonna ensure maximum flavor. Just look at that, so saucy. Now comes the part where I add my own twist. We did a foil boat brisket video where the bottom is wrapped in foil to help it cook faster and make the meat more tender while the top remains open and exposed to the heat and smoke. I don't see any reason why that won't work perfectly in this application. All that we do is to lay it on a piece of foil, meat side down, and basically crumple the foil up around the bottom. This boat will catch all of the rendered fat and cook the meat into squishy little pillows of pork. Now, put it back on the smoker and let the foil boat do its thing. It's so nice to have a helper, and I've got to make her earn her keep, right? Now we got it back on the grill here. So Caitlin did a beautiful job of putting it back on the smoker for us. And we're still running at just uh, about 280 now, but that's more than fine. So pretty cool, right? Very cool. Can I ask you a question? You can. What's what's with the foil? Why are you wrapping right. it like so that? So I had this idea. When, when you're cooking a brisket, we did what's called a foil boat brisket recently, where you wrap it and you leave the top open. Well, what I want is I want the smoke and the heat hitting the top of that, but I also want that bottom part of the pork belly to cook quicker. So by doing the foil, it's gonna make the bottom pork belly actually the meat and fat render and cook quicker, okay? While the top is still getting that heat, making it perfect, dried out for that beautiful chicharron we're gonna make later. You know the crunchy stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did that answer your question? Yeah, Any absolutely. more questions while we're at it here? Um, hmm. What's your favorite way to eat? With my hands, like that. You asked, she asked. Unfortunately. All right, so we've been smoking for about four hours now. We're 275, we got it in the foil boat. It's coming along beautifully. Now we're gonna move on to the next step. So I'll give you a hint. It involves a charcoal chimney. What? Come with me, I'll show you. For the last step of this process, we need high heat. So I'm lighting a charcoal chimney full of briquettes. Two Fogo starters go right on the grate and set the chimney on top. Light the starters with your torch and wait. In about 10 to 15 minutes, the briquettes should be fully lit and ashed over. That's how you know they're ready for use. These are almost there. Once they're ready, carefully pour the chimney full of hot coals onto the coals you already have going. 
This is where the flaps on the grate come in really handy. You don't even have to take the grate out. Just be careful, you will get some sparks flying as you pour the hot coals. If you have an escapee, use this handy cherry picker charcoal tongue to wrangle it back in there. Now, let's return to our artistry and paint another coat of vinegar on the surface of the skin. Just a light coat. We don't want vinegar pools all over our belly, nope. Now we close the lid and let the high heat hit that skin. Start checking on it after about a half hour to 45 minutes. That skin should be beginning to bubble up and crisp up. This was not quite where I wanted it yet. I removed it from the grill to a sheet pan for easier handling. Yes, I know, I spilled a little bit. Hey, it's not the end of the world. Then I added this raised cooking grate and put the skin side down to help the crackling. I only left it on there for a few minutes because the skin was already starting to char and I did not want to burn it. I checked it by flipping it over to see the progress. Coming along nicely. At this point, I'd say we're good. Let's head back inside and see how we did. Okay, here's the real test. These turned out amazing. The skin, although not the most beautiful to look at, was incredibly crunchy and full of that chicharron flavor. And the meat side, well, <laughs> I know why these burnt ends are referred to as meat candy. Oh, and these turned out more tender than a mother's love. Well, I gotta say, it's nice to be wrong. I was wrong. They actually turned out beautifully. The, the meat and the fat is rendered beautifully. The meat is delicious. The skin is crunchy. Um, it got a little bit darker in certain spots, but not as bad as I originally thought, to tell you the truth. And I gotta tell you, they are freaking delicious. I mean, like, so good. I just want to finish this up. So, hey, listen, while I got you a reminder to subscribe to our channel, again, just a reminder, at 100,000 subscribers, we're going to have some huge stuff going on. Might even involve the word giveaways. I don't know. But anyway, so please go ahead and subscribe, like, and do me a favor, leave us a comment. Have you ever made these? Have you ever made pork belly? Have you ever made chicharrones? Where'd I go wrong? What did I do right? I want to know, because I know it's not perfect, but it's pretty darn good. So anyway, I want to thank you all for tuning in again. Remember to get out and grill, and I'll see you the next time on The Fogo Life. Captain Ron, out.